This is part three of our Flickr browser upgrade, material design and other cool stuff. Video three, let's keep going. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to create a new class and we're going to create a special sort of base class which is going to be for our activities because we're going to have a number of additional activities they've all got sort of some shared functionality and it makes sense to create a base class that we can uh, sort of extend at a higher level so I'm going to click on new I've clicked on the package new Java class and I'm going to type base activity it's going to be our base class and we're going to extend action bar activity Okay, just fix that and we'll come back and add some functionality but you notice action bar activity is different to what we've been working on before if we go back to main activity that was just extending activity well we're changing that now we're actually creating or using action bar activity which is another concept that we need to be able to create a toolbar so this is our basic class so we don't need to have a lot of the functionality in it what we want to do is have some of those things that we can reuse in other classes. So what we need is uh, somewhere to store our toolbar. So I'm going to have a private variable, which is a toolbar. I'm going to call it M toolbar. So it looks like when I've upgraded, I lost some of my automatic set, uh, settings to automatically import the packages. But this is important to get the right ones. So I'm going to hold down Alt and press uh, Return on my Mac. Make sure you're supporting the v7.widget.toolbar. If you select this one. This is going to basically only going to work on Android Lollipop only, and you're going to be getting all sorts of weird errors. So you do also make, need to make sure that you're always selecting the .v7. Okay, so we've got our toolbar, and we really only need, need one method at the moment, and that's going to be uh, a method to create and return an instantiated toolbar. So I'm going to protect it, a protected method, return a toolbar, even though we probably won't need it, we're going to return it anyway. Activate toolbar, we're going to call it without any parameters. We're going to do a test first. We're going to type if m toolbar is equal to null. So we're only going to try and create it if it hasn't been created already. So m toolbar equals toolbar find view by id r dot id dot app bar. Now we're going to have an error there, and the reason we've got an error is we haven't uh, set up app bar. App bar is going to be set up as it it's going to include the toolbar in each of our activities. Well, we haven't done that yet, so we, will, we have got this error and we'll come back and fix that. And then we're going to return it and say if M toolbar is not equal to null, so in other words, we did actually get an instance of a toolbar returned to us, we're going to type set support action bar M toolbar, which is sort of the other command that we need to use to set this up so that the toolbar sort of replaces the action bar. Okay, and then last, we need to just return it. Even though we may not be using it, it's good to return it if we do this so we need to. Uh, need to use it elsewhere. Okay, so we've got our general method. So that's going to be used uh, higher up in the chain. We're going to use that first in our main activity. So let's go and do that now. We'll go to our main activity. And I'm going to extend base activity. We're going to use that class we just created as, an, as, as a basis for our code. So before we go too much further and adding anything here, we need to go to the layout and add the toolbar so that we can actually use that because each one of these layouts will need to do just that. So we're going to go into activity main, which of course is the main screen, and we need to add our toolbar to this. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. We just type in include. And I'm going to type in an ID. We need this is where the, that ID, the app bar, comes in. So I'm going to type plus ID. We're going to call it app bar. Then layout equals. This is the layout file we want to include. So we're going to type an at layout. You can probably guess toolbar. So that's the command that's going to basically bring in the contents automatically of this toolbar. What it means is we can set up toolbar once and we can reuse that multiple times so we don't have to go back editing all our layouts all the time. So it's just going to bring that in by default. And the only other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that this view is actually below that one. So to do that, uh, because we're using a relative layout, we want to say that, be, be explicit about it and put layout below 
ID app bar. And that makes sure in this case, that this particular view, which again is gonna end up being our recycle view, is below the toolbar, because of course the toolbar is right at the top. Okay, so that's the change to our activity main. So if we go back to our base activity, that's gonna be happy now, because uh, uh, we've now got that variable. So it knows that uh, there's one at least one setup, and provided we've got an app underscore bar set up in every one of our XML files uh, that's sort of used by a class that's extending base activity, we're gonna be good to go. So you just really need to repeat that exact same name and uh, it'll work just fine. Okay, so no errors, which is good. So the only other thing we need to do now before we can do our first test run is go back to main activity. Because what we haven't done at this stage, we've set up a view uh, set up our content view and we've set up our recycler. What we haven't done, our recycler view I should say, what we haven't done is uh, started any of that code that's in that base activity class. So we're going to type activate toolbar. Now we're not, at this stage we're not going to use a toolbar uh, variable that's returned to us. So that's now going to execute the code that is in base activity which is going to instantiate or create a new instance of a toolbar and it should put it on the screen for us. So let's give our app a try. So it's gonna take a little while to build and while that's building, I'm gonna bring one of these in. I've actually got two uh, Genie Motion emulators. I've got a version four and uh, also the version five as well. Okay, so there we go, that's Lollipop. We're gonna run that on that one first. I'm just gonna wait now until Gradle is finished. And you can see now it's asking us which one. I'm going to run it on Lollipop initially. We'll just see what happens. Okay, we've got a very basic app. As you can see, it's now color style. Notice there's a gap there. We need to look at why there's a gap there and there's not sort of flush sort of straight up against the top. But notice how the color is uh, colored at the top there and that's a darker shade. That's the color dark. And we have got a basic toolbar here. And the toolbar has got settings and so forth and it's sort of good to go. A couple of things, firstly that's in yellow, so I'm gonna look at changing that to yellow, and we need to remove this space to see you know, where is this space coming from. So that space is most likely coming from our uh, layout. So we go back to a layout and have a look at activity underscore main. There's probably a gap there. Margin at the top, there it is, 10 display at density independent pixels, DP. We're gonna delete that, we don't want any margins there. I'm gonna run that. And we'll just check that that is working okay again. And we'll run it again. Actually, that's got rid of the margin, which is good because these colors are designed now not to have any margins. We need a bit of a gap there. You can see sort of the pictures starting pretty close to the top there, but we'll look at those sort of borders a little bit later. We can easily change those. Um, I think we should change this color here. The uh, color looks a bit, uh, I mean, it's a secondary color but I think it looks a bit out of place. I wanted to leave it in yellow first just to show you what it would look like, but we can go back and easily change it. And again, good thing about it is because we've set this up back in styles, we said uh, Android, the secondary color, we were using our secondary text color, but why don't we change that so that's our primary text color. Again, we'll just do a test run. We'll run it. And we've now got that at this stage all in white. So I think that looks a little bit better. And the color's fine there for, uh, for that as well, which is good. So we're all good to go. Um, and just to confirm, we'll also run it again. I'm gonna run it on both devices. So I don't know whether you know this, but you can hold down Shift if you've got two devices running and you've got enough memory and you can run them both. So I'm gonna click on that. And you can see we've got them both. So you can see the differences here. This is uh, Google, this is uh, version 4.4. So this is KitKat. And you notice that it hasn't styled the top of status bar. And that's because that functionality doesn't, it doesn't work at the moment in the app compat library, either by design or because of a bug. But on version five, it works quite nicely as you can see and uh, it styles the top. So what I wanna do is just to show you uh, how easy it is to change. Let's just go back and add a single line here, a single uh, command to the V21 style sheet just to show you how to do it so that we color this bottom status bar with another color, which again isn't normally part, normally something you can do in an older devices without calling additional code. We're doing this all from our style sheets. So I'm gonna go into the values V21 folder, styles.xml, 
and I'm going to press enter there to give us a bit of space. So what I'll do is I'll delete that like that. And I'll just do a style. Now I'm going to type in item. So this command will be executed only if the, the app is running on Android Lollipop. And that's because we're using the V21 styles file. And that's called the navigation bar color. And I'm going to give it the color primary dark. Again, you might be wondering where's color primary dark defined? Well, that's actually defined color primary dark there. We just should give us our secondary color, which is that darker tint. So we're going to run that again. Okay, this won't work on uh, the older Android devices. And in this case, of course, we've only accessed the style sheet for the Android Lollipop. So you can see that that's worked quite nicely. So that's now uh, executed that command. And again, just going back and having a look at it. So it knows that, okay, I need to use theme.base. That's my basis. But I'm going to override that. In this particular case, the navigation bar, uh, I'm going to actually color that. So that's an example of how you can use an Android sort of lollipop specific feature and put that in the style and not sort of change any other functionality. And that's sort of how the two, you can see how the two style sheets sort of complement each other. Pretty neat how that works. Okay, so next thing we need to do, we've got a basic uh, toolbar working. But of course, we want to add a... Uh, search icon. We want a button that we can click, a menu option in this case. We can click it and so we can actually type in something so we can search for whatever we want to search in the Flickr feed rather than editing the source code every time we want to make a change. So we want to add an icon. And how do we go about adding an icon? Well we actually add it as a menu option because this is actually a menu up here. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video.